He's scoring goals, winning medals, and making it big on the other side of the world. He has the crowd roaring, and in Germany, home of the World Cup champions, he is a household name. Some people know him as Winton, but most of all, he's called Kiwi Rufa, and it all began back in Wellington, New Zealand, where Winton Rufa was born and grew up. As a child, he had visions of playing soccer professionally, and by the time he was 18, he'd packed his bags and set off for England to fulfill those dreams. In those days, Pelé was his idol, his god, the greatest player the world had ever seen. But today, playing striker for the prestigious German club Werder Bremen, Winton Rufer will tell anyone he sold out for Jesus. Back to the game, though, and with 10 years of professional soccer to look back on, Winton Rufer now introduces his own soccer training video, presenting you with one hour of soccer highlights, exercises, coaching techniques, and his own personal advice. You'll also see some of his best goals scored in the top German Bundesliga and in European Cup games. For the first time in New Zealand, Kiwis are privileged to view their very own born and bred superstar and his spectacular skills performed in some of the finest stadiums around the world. Yes, and it's goals like these that have made Winton Rufer one of New Zealand's most accomplished sportsmen. And to be a successful sportsman like Winton Rufer, you need to be fit. Physical fitness consists of endurance, strength, speed, coordination and flexibility. Stretching makes the muscles flexible, ready for action, can prevent injuries and just feels good. Okay, I'm starting up with this exercise here and it's just a stretching of the side of the back going to both sides. Here I'm doing it a little bit quicker but of course for each side you want to do about 10 seconds and of course one of the most important exercises for a footballer and we all know this exercise is for the groins here and we take a lot of these things for granted but it's very important that we do it nice and relaxed nice and slowly both sides and we just stretch it out and you notice all these exercises that we're doing it's just a signal that the body is going to be getting into movement it's a signal that we're really going to be starting to play I mean we can't get up in the morning and straight away run the 100 meters and that's why the same thing in football we need to do this proper warm-up a good stretching and notice that my body is always straight I always have my feet facing forward even my back foot is facing forward the, the way that you stand is, is, is very important and of course we have this exercise as we know for the um, quadriceps this part and I see that I'm stretching trying to put my heel up to my backside but even a better exercise for this exercise is down on the ground and getting my feet getting hands hold of my feet and then just putting my body is straight looking to get my heel back to the back side just leaning forward slightly and that's even a progression it's even more of a stretch than from that when I was standing up before So now another very important exercise for the hamstrings, this leg straight out, get a good grip of my leg behind the kneecap and push it, pull my leg towards me and then try to stretch my foot, push it to, like, towards my head and then you can feel it on the top part of the hamstring here and you're holding it there for a good 10 seconds 
and then to use the rest of the hamstrings, let my arms go and look to straighten my leg out. So now the calf muscles, and here I'm looking to press down with this leg here to really stretch the calf muscle. A lot of soccer players like I was, when I was younger, had uh, problems with the ankles. And we're always going over on them. And this is a great exercise for coordination, just balancing on the one foot here, And now our progression is closing the eyes. It's even a little bit more difficult. And all the muscles are in your ankle are working and they're automatically getting strengthened. And what I'm trying to achieve here is just to get movement by the ground, the groin area, around the hip area where especially a lot of soccer players are very stiff and have a lot of problems. And all I'm trying to do is, like I said, here straight, my back straight, just get a lot of movement around the groin area, back and forth. As the game's about to begin, are we ready for the battle? Unfortunately, a lot of players take the warm-ups and stretching for granted. We play soccer because we love the game, but we also want to get better and stronger. So stretch before you strengthen. Don't bounce, as this will tighten the muscles you are trying to stretch. If pain is present, stop immediately. Remember to stretch regularly with deep, relaxed breathing. We need to learn about our bodies and to develop our own potential for the world's greatest game. Passing is a basic skill, but maybe the most important in soccer. Games are won through simple effective passing and also lost when we foolishly give possession away. At training, think about this. Your non-kicking foot beside the ball and the same foot facing your target when connecting. Your body should be leaning slightly forward over the ball, always in movement, ready to adjust your position when receiving the ball. In training, we should always exaggerate our movements because the game situation is a whole new ball game. Remember, eyes on the ball and follow through the ball. Nothing beats experience. The older you are, the more training you've had, and if you've been smart enough, you'll be a confident player on the ball. Notice now, one touch to receive the ball, and then head up to look where the pass will go. A quick glance is called peripheral vision eyes on the ball again as we pass. We must think about these techniques and practice them in training. Only then can we use them to the full effect in the game. Here is a perfect counter-attack with quick, simple and effective passing over the whole field, combined with fine vision from Klaus Olofs that sets up another one of my goals. Now. After another series of simple passing, I return the favour to Klaus Olofs and set him up for a goal that he also scores with a placed shot using the side of the foot. 
We all like to see Brazilian tricks and overhead kicks, but many times it's the simple passing that will lead to the ultimate success. Ball control, ball control. Basic skills, but we can't take it for granted if we want to be good players. Looking to keep the ball on the move. Keep the balance, keep your, the balls for you, body behind the ball, and then even move it to one side. A good ball control technique is a necessity if we want to keep possession of the ball. Always look to control or receive the ball while moving. Stopping the ball dead is easier for your opponents. Control the ball and keep it moving and you'll automatically create space for yourself. Look at a skillful teammate or opponent and when they have time to perform. How's that for skill? Add to this the time and space winning factor of vision. Look around you, where are your teammates, your opposition? Some players can do wonders by having a quick glance behind them before receiving the ball. Peripheral vision is a skill factor on its own, and one that made the soccer experts claim that Pele had eyes in the back of his head. This is an exercise that we can train on our own in a confined space. As long as you play competitive soccer, never give up on practicing these skills. Here a Bremen player takes control of the long pass, sets up a cross that leads to a brilliant header from Karl-Heinz Riedler. Klaus Alofs holds off a defender and controls a dropping ball. A cheeky nutmeg follows before he hits the net. On the field, you must be alert to receive the ball from all angles with either foot. Here, Klaus Olofs and I combined perfectly. So here we've got another good exercise, just inside of the foot, passing back to the arms of your friend, concentrating, looking for perfection left and right, arms out, then in step, side of the foot, then in step. As many touches as we can get, so that we can be perfect with the volley. Left and right, you see? You won't be able to tell which foot is my stronger one, because I've trained this. So that whichever side the ball comes, I'll do I'll meet it with, without any problem.
Hitting can be an effective weapon in soccer. Use the forehead with eyes wide open. Bravery is a big part of the game too. Soccer needs big hearts and no fear to put the head where it could hurt. Set pieces or corners can also cause havoc in play to your team's or individual player's strengths. Power in jumping, strength in the legs and of course timing are very decisive. Now it's important, as I'm hitting, I've got my legs wide, I'm jumping actually, the most power is coming from my stomach, you know, of course we're going to use our heads, our necks, but as you're training this exercise, the most important thing is to show the technique, I've got my legs wide, out, as I land, and I'm using my stomach, because that's where you get the most power from. <sighs> Looking to score goals with your head, try always to head the ball down. Also, run into space, try to lose your marker and attack areas that are close to goal. These are especially penalty box attacking qualities of a player. Goal scorers get all the credit, but what could we do without the service? This game was the German Cup semi-final replay, and this is my second header from a hat-trick that put us in the cup final. So here's another good exercise for uh, headering. I learnt this from my old mentor Jim McMillan in Miramar and this is a great exercise for headering because it's you've got someone there standing holding the ball so you feel a bit unsure and you've got to keep your eyes open, one foot takeoffs, legs, legs spread apart. Okay. <coughs> Good. So these heading exercises that I learnt from Jim McMillan of Wellington are for me brilliant exercises, it's really helped me with my heading training. <laughs> Here I'm just doing a strength exercise. I'm at a 90 degree angle up against the goalpost, but we can also do this at home. And look, to just stay here for two minutes. And following this exercise, there are some other strength exercises for jumping, which will help the game to get the necessary strength to be a good player. These exercises are all tips for private training. I favor natural strength training because soccer is a game of natural strength. Although I think weight training in moderation, say once a week, is also a possibility to get stronger. So now we're looking to do some stomach exercises, which is in, uh, to do with the hitting exercises, which we did, and just general strength. Now a lot of these exercises, like this, you know, they feel good for the stomach, but in actual fact, you're using more this part of the body, and you've got too much of a pressure on your back. So their actual fact, they're not good for you. Best is the stomach exercises when your back is like, when you're lying right back, there's no pressure on your lower back or your back and exercises like, like this.
these stomach muscle exercises for the side are important that your chin is more or less in line with the hip here, arms are outstretched, and then of course you swap to the other side, and you're just up and you'll feel it in here for the stomach, mu the stomach. and you've got no strain on your back. And now, pushing against your knees. At the same time that we do the stomach exercises, we need to have the balance with back exercises. And a lot of footballers have problems with their back. And notice at the back of my foot, the heel is facing up, toe to the ground. I'm stretching out. And then we can combine this. We're stretching the back. Other side. Everything straight, stretching out, head down as you're doing the exercise. As a pro, it's got to a stage now where I'm a marked man every game. To create space for myself to receive the ball or go for goal, I'll find myself in many sprint duels. Over the whole period of the game though, I'll need a lot of endurance, like a long distance runner, if I want to have the speed and strength right till the end of the game. Endurance is the foundation by which you'll build up your physical condition where only the strongest and fittest will survive at the top. Together with speed and strength, we're talking about the attributes that all world-class players will possess before even kicking a ball. Remember Maradona at the 1986 World Cup? We'll never forget the unbelievable skills he performed with the ball, but even he will claim that his speed and strength were at an ultimate. So here we've got a basic shuttle exercise, also very good for sprinting exercises, because the best footballers in the world, you'll find that most of them are very quick. So with these sprinting exercises, we're starting from standstill, slow pace, jog, and finally into a sprint. You don't just have to run fast to be quick though. Experienced players without the legs anymore for speed can make up for it many times through quick thinking. Speed can also be defined as letting the ball do the work. One touch football for instance. If you want to improve your crossing and long passing, practice kicking a dead ball. With my own personal technique in crossing, I like to take risks where I can. I try to get my crosses in early and hit the ball with power, almost like a shot. There aren't many players in the game who can use both feet with equal efficiency, and being two-footed is something I taught myself as a kid. Learn to really accomplish the simple things in football. Try running to the ball at different angles to find out which angle of approach produces the best results for your crossing or long passing. Hitting a long ball can give variation to your game and when switching play you can open up the whole game. A high back action, heel to the back side of the kicking foot helps to give you that extra power the non-kicking foot should be beside the ball with your body leaning slightly backwards. Eyes on the ball, arms out balancing your actions. Follow right through the ball. I can't stress it enough though, practice makes perfect.
So the game is about scoring goals. And in shooting, it's important that we have the non-kicking leg beside the ball. Here we've got the knee over the ball and even looking to get the heel up beside the backside before we connect so that we get good power as we want to hit the target and we've got a body slightly over the ball that we can keep the ball down. Sometimes a deciding factor in shooting is the fact of being relaxed. In front of goal in a pressure situation you need the ability to stay cool. The instep is not always needed to shoot as the side of the foot can be very effective but we also need to stay balanced on our feet. Even one of the most skillful players of the German national team can make schoolboy errors. Olaf Tone completely mistimes his shot, but I think he wanted to break the net too. Concentrate on hitting the target, not to miss around, but to strike at the nearest opportunity. Shooting is without doubt one of the game's most exciting characteristics, so learn to shoot with both feet. I played in goal till I was 13 years old. I still dream of saving a penalty as a keeper in a cup final. However, goalkeepers have a difficult position. For long periods in the game, they'll have nothing to do, and one lapse in concentration from the keeper can be devastating for the whole team. When you want to catch or hold the ball, you must watch that your thumbs are behind the ball. It's important to even form a triangle with your thumbs and index fingers around the ball. In punching the ball, it's more reliable to use both fists to get sufficient power to strike the ball away from the goal area. Keepers need to be prepared to come out for high crosses, taking the ball with both hands or punching away with one fist if necessary. Many goals fall through these elementary goalkeeping errors. A good goalkeeper will possess confident ball handling skills, quick reflexes, needs to be strong to knock opponents around going for high balls, have little fear in diving at an attacker's feet and be a sweeper behind the defence ready to run out of the box to fall an attack. A keeper should have a big mouth instructing his defenders what to do because he can see the whole game before him. By the time you make it to the top men's team or a professional league, your coach, trainer or manager will expect you to be a finished product, ready for the stage to perform. There will be far less time to practice these techniques because your performance is dependent on winning. When you win, everything is right. If you lose, you'll have sometimes two days or at the most a week to gather your resources together for the next game. From the set of players that your team of 11 is drawn from, there may be injuries, players out of form, so the coach simply does not have the time to teach you the individual skills of the game. 
If he loses too many games, he may get fired. Therefore, in your own backyard or with a friend, goalkeepers need to practice these ball handling skills, diving and reflex training. It must be fair to say that being the odd one out in the team, goalkeepers are generally underrated. They have actually the most difficult position in the team. Only the most dedicated keepers or players with the attitude to work hard will ever have a chance to make it to the top. Once there though, the real battle will just begin. Set pieces make up a large percentage of all goals in soccer. If you train your shooting techniques to perfection, you'll have a great benefit to your game. To hit the ball over a wall, we really need to take time out and train the set piece on our own. Practice shooting into the top corner of an empty goal. Incredibly, it's a matter of concentration, believing in yourself. The ball doesn't need to be smashed, but hit firmly with a place shot. Look to hit a free kick in no man's land between defence and goalkeeper so your attackers can run onto the ball. Strike the free kick with power, like a shot. It takes a lot of training, mishits and mistakes to get things right, but if we have the confidence to take risks at the proper time, we will be rewarded and celebrating a goal can be real fun. The game is about good and bad luck, but if you're prepared to fight honestly and never give up, every man will receive his due.
Wir sind schon glücklich. Es war schon äh, ein lucky day, ein glücklicher Tag für uns. Aber gut, das, das gehört dazu. Ja? Every penalty should be a goal. Changing your mind about which side of the goal you shoot can be disastrous. Many players have different styles in shooting a penalty. Ideally, you need to have full concentration, decide on where you want to shoot, and hit the ball firmly. Dribbling is an aspect of the game that gives players an opportunity to express themselves. The most creative players in the world were or are wonderful dribblers of the ball. I learnt most of my dribbling skills down at Miramar Park Wellington, after school with Jim McMillan. It was these type of exercises that I learnt from Jim and I would also practice them in my own backyard. Even today I'll try to use them in training and games. Work on these skills in confined spaces because we'll attempt to dribble in the game where there is little room. Get lots of touches on the ball and keep your head up to have the vision. During a dribble, you may be able to pass to a teammate in a better position. Always look to keep your body between ball and opponent. Work on your own tricks so that you can master something special. Remember, practice and game are two different ball games so that when you try to execute your tricks and dribblings, look to do it when you're attacking in your opponent's half in the top third of the field always working hard and gaining confidence and then you're ready to take risks in the game allowing for mistakes but never giving up Even to like go past, go past to like around. Them. We actually even go around them.
African nations are making names for themselves in the soccer world because they are learning about the basics of discipline. This, combined with their natural talents, gives them an overall better tactical sense of the game. When I played with the All Whites at the 1982 World Cup in Spain, we got there mainly because the team was a disciplined, obedient outfit of men, prepared to put into practice the instructions of our coaches John Adsid and Kevin Fallon. What we lacked in skills and talent was made up in attitude, application and fighting spirit, each man working for the next with a willingness to obey and learn. In a soccer career, you'll probably have a dozen coaches, so don't get fooled into thinking that one coach is responsible for your own failures. Soccer is a man's game where you must show a lot of character in order to succeed. You can learn something from every coach if you want to. It depends entirely on your own personal attitude and how you'll apply it to the game. If you're willing to obey, learn and fight, you'll set the foundation for a good career in the game. As a youngster in Wellington or in the first years of my pro career, there were many trainers who thought I was too lazy. Running and working without the ball are tactics of the game I've had to learn about in Europe. As a striker we may be in attack but lose possession of the ball, so we strikers need to get back behind the ball to form the first wall of defence. It is unfortunate though that many teams place first priority in defending and this usually causes an unattractive game of soccer. The greatest emphasis on the game should be about attacking and scoring goals but when teams have tactics of man-to-man -man marking with so much at stake teams will cancel each other out and the game can be a real bore. Mental preparation is an important aspect of the game too. I'll be the first to admit that my lack of concentration has let me down on many occasions. As a player, try not to study and think too much about the why and why not things of the game. Concentrate and place first priority in doing your job for the team. Keep the game simple, which simply is, the ball must go in the goal. Juggling is just a simple form of training that you can do at home on your own. Already when I was 10 years old I could keep the ball up 500 times and I really believe it's made me a better soccer player to have coordination, balance, concentration, using both feet, all parts of your body. So it's a good form of training for yourself.
so much pressure on the game to win, there is unfortunately little time for fun and games. Winning is about getting stuck in, not just scoring the most goals, but also winning the most tackling duels. Right from the start of the game, you need to have the attitude and application to fight for 90 minutes. A winning team consists of battlers with great fighting spirits, but it's also a positive aggression that needs to triumph. My present trainer thinks I'm far too fair on my opponents who are always trying to keep a hold on me in an unfair manner. Being tightly marked every game can get to your nerves, but I guess I've held out well till now, being voted one of the fairest players in the Bundesliga two seasons in a row. I try my best to be a fair player, and in all my time in Germany I've never had one yellow card, although I've been lucky on a few occasions. Boy, did the Christian Winton Rufa have a few explanations to make after this cheeky winning goal in a major league game. A schoolboy habit that I can't seem to let go of. Another part of the game that can cause an uproar is the player falling in the box, looking for a penalty or maybe a part in a Hollywood movie. The incredible thing about it is that they even get away with it. What a job those referees have. In my career so far, I've been very lucky with injuries too. It's the worst nightmare for a player when you're injured. Despite all the highs and lows, I can't help but love the game, which continues to be the greatest spectator sport in the world. I love also to celebrate a goal. And there are few words to explain that feeling of joy. Joy for me is the summary of this whole theme of discipline. Joy is making it to a cup final. A fine reward or career highlight for any player. Winning it then is the icing on the cake. Winter Roofer, Kiwi Extraordinaire, 
Against all the odds, he's proved what many soccer players are still dreaming about. Playing at the highest level in world soccer, he continues to hit the headlines. In a long and distinguished career as a player, he has now developed the potential as a coach and fulfilled another ambition, giving back to the game many of the secrets he has gained along the way. Today, this New Zealander is a soccer star, an ambassador for his country, a man on a mission, a world-class athlete destined to win the Oceana Player of the Year Award for a record third time. Winton is a dynamic striker whose running creates a lot of space for me and I think we are a good combination in the game. I have watched Winton closely in games where we've played against each other, especially because of the fact that we are brothers in Christ. What fascinates me is that during the games he has this certain peace about him. He also has an eye for the game that is very important for a striker and this is why he scores lots of goals using both feet to shoot. Windrufer is one of the top class football players. He's got excellent endurance, a remarkable understanding of the game, a very skillful player, a fine header of the ball, and above all, a very intelligent man who also thinks about matters in life other than football. It is an amazing fact to say that matters other than football have characterized this man, and in the sometimes harsh world of professional sport that says a lot for a soccer player from Kiwiland. His outspoken manner in talking about Jesus has left many fans and people thinking about life after soccer. And Kiwi Rufa is only too eager to tell about this life-changing relationship, knowing Christ as one's personal savior. To be honest, the, there is simply something far more important in my life, and that's uh, Jesus Christ. And all the goals that I score, all the money that I earn, all the fame that I get from soccer, none of that I can take with me to heaven. Winton Rufer will be the first to acknowledge, too, that his marriage with Lisa has also played a major role in his career successes. problem is not, not so that I'm feeling um, as if I'm always in the background because Winton tries to really involve me in, in the football and you know in everything that he does. It's just that sometimes I feel um, that we could be taken more as, as human beings and because I think we are, we are almost like, uh, Winton is almost like a god or something and I wish people could just be more natural towards us and um, really realize that we are also human beings and, and not just, not just um, you know, something is sitting up there on a pedestal. Kiwi Roofer is not just a man of many words. Winton and Lisa are the proud parents of their own son, Caleb, and for many years now have been supporting children in third world countries. Of course, he likes to let his skills and goals do the talking on the field, while off the field, he's an advocate for the underprivileged children. Taking advantage of his popularity, he has tried to expose the need of the less fortunate of this world and his football fame is truly a wonderful way of doing it. Soccer player or crusader, Kiwi Rufa is really one of a kind. 